attacked the persona of the vice president by calling her shallow and shameful. At no time did my statement refer to her persona, but rather to the statement that she uttered. Yours faithfully, Mr. Simwetwa, MP, Choma Central Parliamentary Constituency. End of quote. Further, Diamond Television supplied the video recording of the Costa program, which featured Mr. Mwetwa, MP, as requested. The footage revealed that Mr. C. Mwetwa, MP, in discussing the gassing situation in the country, uttered the following statement, and I quote, if they want Dununa reverse like they did in 2011, they did in 2015, 2016, it's their choice. We will continue to beg them that there's a better alternative that can deliver this country, and if they don't agree with us, who are we to force them? But we will not say no. Now there's gassing. Let's remove this government. No. We want 2021 elections to come. If anyone is thinking about taking this opportunity because of gassing, no. Let's change the regime. Like the vice president said on the floor of the house, no, we know this gassing because some people want regime change. Yeah, yeah. That was shallow of a vice president of a country. Shallow and shameful. End of quote. Furthermore, the mass newspaper, despite several reminders, did not respond to the letter from the office of the clerk. Honorable members, in the point of order, Honorable J. Kapata MP alleged that Mr. Simwetwa MP had attacked her honor, the vice president, regarding a statement she made on the floor of the house by describing her as shallow and shameful for linking the gas attacks to regime change. In his written response, Mr. Simon to her MP denied describing her honor, the vice president, as shallow and shameful. However, Mr. Mwetwa's MP, however, Mr. Mwetwa MP admitted having used the words shallow and shameful, he further explained that he used the words shallow and shameful in re reference to the statement of our honor, the vice president, contrary to the point of order which he alleged that he attacked the persona of our honor, the vice president, by describing her shallow and shameful. Honorable members, it is self-evident from the written response tendered by Mr. C. Mwetwa MP, as well as the footage obtained from Diamond Television that indeed Mr. Mwetwa MP described the vice president as shallow and shameful. To put it succinctly, honorable members, the article by the mass newspaper and the footage obtained from Diamond Television depicts crystal clear that Mr. Mwetwa MP did in fact say that, and I quote, that was shallow of the vice president of the country, shallow and shameful, end of quote. I find this statement was Mr. Mwetwa's estimation of her honor, the vice president, and therefore an attack on her persona based on what she said on the floor of the house. The utterance by Mr. Mwetwa MP also amounted to denigrating her honor, the vice president, on account of her conduct of business during a proceeding of parliament. This was a clearly a violation of rights of parliament as envisaged by the learned authors Audrey O'Brien and Mark Bosk in their book entitled House of Commons, Procedure and, Pro Procedure and Practice, 
refer to above. Further, the description of our honor, the vice president, as shallow and shameful, was demeaning and disrespectful to her as a person and also to the office of vice president and leader of government business in the house, both positions that she holds. I must state here that I've always counseled honorable members on numerous occasions that it is important for members to accord respect for one another. And moreover, for her honor, the vice president, granted that she holds the second highest position in the land. Honorable members, in view of the foregoing, I find that Mr. Simwe to MP to have been out of order in breach of parliamentary privilege and in contempt of the House. In view of the foregoing, I have decided to admonish him in accordance with Section 28.1b of the National Assembly Powers and Privileges Act, Cap 12 of the Laws of Zambia. I will now address you, Mr. Simwetwa, MP. Mr. Simwetwa, MP, your description of our honor, the Vice President, as shallow and shameful, amounted to a personal attack on our honor, the Vice President. This is because the words shallow and shameful were deployed to describe her honor, the Vice President, and in view of the position she holds as Vice President of the Republic of Zambia and leader of government business in the House, your description of her in those terms were demeaning and highly disrespectful. As a long-serving member of this August House, it is most unfortunate that you conducted yourself in the manner you did. And your misconduct has the potential of lowering the integrity and decorum of this house. Both as a honorable member, your conduct should be above reproach, both in and outside the house. The house is in this regard extremely displeased with your conduct. I expect that in future you will abide by the rules of the house and avoid such misconduct. A repetition of such misconduct would definitely attract a stiffer penalty. You may proceed to tender your apology. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for inviting me to this house. I was last year in March. And thank you, Mr. Speaker, for asking me to come and apologize for a statement I made in reference to the statement made by Her Honor the Vice President in what I believe was in furtherance of my enjoyment of my freedom of speech as entrenched in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia. Mr. Speaker, asking me to apologize is like asking me to stop breathing. I made it abundantly clear to your, to your committee Honorable that member, I... Take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. You have been advised of the proceedings, and I believe you were approached by the clerk of the National Assembly, and you are not the first one requested to apologize in the circumstances that I have outlined. So as you give you the liberty to follow a very well-established procedure for tendering an apology. Honorable member for Choma Central. Mr. Speaker, the person who should apologize is the Vice President for misleading the nation that we, the opposition, were conducting for casting. Choma, take a seat. Is it your position that you've refused to apologize? I can't apologize no, no, for no. enjoying my freedom of speech. It's, it's a Not very me, simple Mr. Question. Speaker. This is the reason why we continue take in this seat. house. Take a no seat. way. Take a seat. No way. Punish Take me for seat. what I have done wrong, not for no wrongdoing. Take a no. seat. Take your seat. 
It's a very simple pro question that I've posed to you. There's nothing like this. Either you apologize or you don't, and then we proceed. We can't spend the, the rest of our time on this. Either you accept to apologize or you refuse. It's as simple. You don't have to offer any explanation. Mr. Speaker, I communicated to management yesterday that I can't apologize for no wrong. So you have refused. I am not apologizing. Take a seat. Take a seat. So for the record, Honorable Mwetwa, Member of Parliament for Choma Central, has refused to apologize to our honor, the Vice President. We'll proceed. I honor the Vice President who will now indicate business of the House for next week. 